guys. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys some suggestions and just what I would consider some tips on setting up uh, some tables for playing games of five parsecs from home. What you are looking at here is a table of Kyrus 2, which I just call Kyrus in most of the game. And Kyrus is a jungle planet, as I said in uh, my video on my crew and my mission, if you didn't see that. But only because it's a jungle planet, you don't want to just set up a jungle and play the game out like that. I mean, you could do that, but you're going to be sacrificing a lot of the sci-fi aesthetic. So one of the things I tried to do when I was building this is try to make different things that would have appeared or existed maybe at different times in the planet's history. You want there to be a... Uh, when you're playing sci-fi games like this, especially in things like French space or parts of space that are uh, that have been colonized to some extent, you want there to be somewhat of a disconnect, right? You want something to stand out of place that tells you things are not normal. This is not as it should be. And so in this case, just by using this simple gas station diesel food sign in this container, it kind of gives you an idea that something weird has happened. How'd that get here? And you don't have to explain it because in games like this where you have people trading and cargo, over the years, many, many different things are going to wind up on different planets. And that will be reflected uh, by things that are still left behind, kind of the artifacts. So here we see an old car from Earth. You know, maybe somebody traded them for that. And they brought it to the planet and maybe it was crushed in half by an indigenous creature. We don't have the slightest idea what this is. This looks highly advanced, right? But it's just kind of sitting here in the middle of the jungle. This is obviously uh, Jake Mandrake and his crew who have landed and are proceeding from this point to investigate or basically to look for the pharaohs. This here is actually something that could be advanced or it could be very primitive. We have no idea. That probably predates most of the life forms on this planet. And so this is just to give you some kind of ideals that if you are setting up your games using your terrain, kind of think of something that can jar the scene. If you want the game to be in a city, you know, maybe you will create a game using your normal city buildings, but Maybe all of the posters or the windows or the decor or the furniture in the buildings will all be futuristic. And you can reverse that. You can have a situation where you have very modern buildings, but all of the furniture or decal is very old or antique. Maybe you have a scene where you have kind of modern buildings, meaning like in our present day, but your streets in your game are all glowing. So you have purple streets going through your city. Right. Again, you want to create kind of a disjointed effect to show that this has been over very, very, very long periods of time and very different stages in the development of the planet or, you know, even the, uh, the city or something itself. And so the only reason I'm showing you this is to kind of give you guys some ideals. You know, how to think outside of the box when you are setting this up. And you, know, you don't have to get real carried away with it. Just something as simple as this. This is like from, a, I think, an air freshener, right? And then this little piece next to it, I mean, that just <laughs> looks totally out of place, right? And that's why I put it there. The other thing I will ask you to do, since you are playing games of five parsecs from home, and this is very important, in five parsecs from home, you may return to planets that you have visited before. So make sure you go ahead and take a picture of your table or your setup so that if your crew winds up back on that planet, you can reset up where they were at before. Now, if you don't do that, that's fine. You can say, well, they landed at a different place. You know, a planet is a big place. But at least get an idea of the aesthetic. So if they return to that planet again, you don't have to have the exact same items. But you want to have the exact same aesthetic. And so I hope that helps you guys with the table part of uh, trying to set up to play 
games of five parsecs from home, Stargrave, uh, whatever you may be using. Now, obviously, games like Zona Alpha, this is not going to work because that whole aesthetic is predefined for you. Uh, games like uh, Horizon uh, Zero Dark or whatever, it's not going to work because that's kind of a, a demolished earth where everything is taking place. So the aesthetic is defined. But when you are playing games where you will be visiting different worlds and different aesthetics, remember to kind of keep in mind, you know, how can I, how can I kind of show the progression of time and events and of space and things for this crew and everybody. I think it's fun. And if you watch good sci-fi movies, you will see that. If you go back and watch Star Wars, uh, whether it's Tatooine or any other planet, you may see an old, riggedy-looking uh, structure. And then all of a sudden, somebody zooms by on a speeder bike, right, floating in the air. And that's how you know you're in Star Wars, right? And you're not in Mad Max, for example. So the next thing we're going to look at is, uh, I want to show you guys, uh, what are they called? Maps, or basically game maps that you can use, or uh, tiles that you can also use to play your games with. Because in sci-fi, that's going to be very important. Some places, you're just not going to have all the different types of terrain. So uh, I'm going to show you guys you know, what kind of tiles you can get as far as where I know where you can get them. Uh, that you can also use in your games. Okay guys, so now we're going to take a look at uh, probably three three or four different things that uh, you can kind of use that will kind of, hopefully will kind of complete your, uh, will complete your uh, terrain features for some sci-fi games like Five Parsecs from Home and uh, Stargrave. And there's one other one after this, which I will show you one other category uh, after these items. But that category is more or less if you're going to be spending a lot of money. So obviously, if you have money to buy something like battle system, sci-fi terrain or things like that, uh, you know, star finder terrain, then, you know, you don't need me to show you how to use that. But uh what we're going to look at right now is just things that you might already have in your home or your hobby room or things that you can get fairly easily. Now, the first of these is uh, obviously just ship models. And again, I showed you guys these in my uh, Star Wars miniature battle game. And now when I say using these ship models, I'm not talking about as ships. Uh, that you're going to try to do stats for to represent your cruise ship even. But just simply terrain. So if you saw in my uh, first video, uh, Mission 1, uh, To Hell with Caesar, uh, I had a ship in the background the whole game. It didn't do anything, right? But it was a ship in the background. It represented my cruise ship. If you want to give a rule to it, then I would suggest this because I think this would be a simple, elegant way to represent your ship in a in a game on the table is you can use your ship as an exit point and the rules allow you to move people off out of the game by moving them off any board edge so what i would allow is off any board edge or by simply entering your ship saying hey this crew member is going in the ship which means they're kind of out of the game right and so that could actually be kind of a, a fun thing where you're thinking as you set up, okay, where do we want to want our ship to be as we come in? Do we want to come in with our ship? Would we like our ship to be on the other side of the map? And so that way, since we have to work our way toward the map, uh, our ship is there. If we get in trouble, we can just jump in the ship and bail. Or do we want to have a ship right here with us? So that if things go bad, we can turn around in the opposite direction and retreat back to our ship. Or as Jake Mandrake would call it, your Alamo. So just keep an eye on that. Just think about that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to show you are just some handmade objectives. And the nice thing about 5 Parsecs from Home is in a lot of the games they have things called... Uh, notable locations or notable objects you don't necessarily know what they are 
until you go search them. So the ruse may say, you know, there's a notable object on this planet. Now on Kiris, there were none. But if there have been, you could set up a piece of terrain like this, which this is just an old medicine bottle, right? And I mean, really, if you really want to play, you know, you could just put something random in there, right? You could put a weapon, you could put a token or anything you want in there, you know, randomize it and, uh, you know, you could find the equivalent for it in your game rules. Or you could make tokens for uh, the different items on the table and throw one in there. So that is something you can do. And there, I did a video on how I built these. I don't remember if it was a, if it was an after painting video or if uh, I did a separate video. But you know, if you look under my terrain playlist, I think there's something in there. This one represents a gun emplacement, obviously. Very powerful weapon there. This could be an object in itself. Uh, you know, maybe they're they're firing this out into space and you can't take off until you disable this. Or if you do take off, maybe you have a feature where you have to roll as your ship is damaged or takes haul damage. Because there's a, there's a rule in there if you try to take off while your ship is damaged. I would say you use that if you if you don't take this out. So, uh, and again, I made these all from scratch. Probably, was it a year ago now? Yeah, probably a year ago. I made these all from scratch. I don't think it was an after painting either because if it was, I would have, uh, if it was, I would have uh, already pulled it out by now. But I will see if I can find a link to this video, I will try to put a card up. But those I think are very nice. And that, I did not come up with that idea. I saw that on another channel. Now, the last two things are the main things I wanted to recommend to you. Uh, the first one are these tiles. Now, again, these come from uh, Star Wars miniatures. Uh, you, got the, you get these in some of the box games. But some of these you can buy individually, right? When people get these games, they just pull the miniatures out and sell everything off separately. Other games like... Uh, Starfinder has things like this for it, uh, either in some of their modules and things. The most common place you will find something like this uh, is basically Drive Through RPG or War Games Vault, where you're just going to be looking for you know artist rendering of sci-fi tiles, and you can you know you can print them out on some cardstock or you can glue them. These from Star Wars though are you know already on cardstock. But so here we have like a shaft which is crossing over some type of chasm down there. This is a cargo bay. This is a hyperdrive station. This is a detention detention block. Right? So if you are playing games where somebody is in a detention cell, a hangar bay a control room, a, let's see here, turbo lift cluster, and a storage, uh, storage bay. And these are one-sided, but you know, I'm definitely looking forward to those. Most of those, what you would do then is take the other thing I'm going to recommend to you is to see if you can locate some of these mats, which are basically Star Wars miniature mats. But again, games like Pathfinder, there may be mats that you can buy that will have sci-fi images on them. And you can either do these separately or you can do these with your terrain. Now this mat has one side that is basically gridded and all gray like this. And I think these are one inch grids. Uh, so that actually makes it easy for movement and things. But what you could do then is you could place your uh, you could place your tiles in the different grids, right? And so that creates lanes. Well, you can't really see that, but let's do this one. So it will create natural lanes, a one-inch lane here, where you can move from one one grid or one hanger to the other. And, you know, depending on how you choose to lay them out, 
you know, you can put together a pretty interesting interior of maybe a, a star base, a star station, a spaceport. Now, on this side is obviously a very large, a very large, uh, I don't know what this exactly is. Let me see if it says, it just says battle grid on here. But this is actually a very large area on one of these maps. And I'll kind of pull out to let you see here. So you have a flight control center. You have a tractor beam, reactor coupling, ion cannery, battery, turbo lift, security sector. So this is obviously something that would be perfect for a Unity, a Unity station. Right, a Unity, either a Unity ship, a Unity starport, a detention block, but any kind of Unity uh, location, you know, you could represent with a big old map like this. Now, this, on the other hand, is some type of desert, desert planet. So, if you are playing a game where you are landing on a desert planet. Let's see what the name of this is. This one actually has a name on it. It is called the Korriban Valley of the Dark Lords. So you could imagine having to work your way through this valley all the way through and out to the other side. And again, you could supplement this or complement this you know, with anything from a ship, you know, sitting out here at the edge of the valley, does it work? Is it manned? Can it be boarded? And so forth. This one uh, is the opposite side of the other one. So this one actually, you do get two different scenes in a map like this. All right, and so this is the opposite side of that map. So we have our vehicle lift landing platform, our cargo lift, airlock, turbo lifts, workstations, security control room, more turbo lifts, throne room. I don't know who has a throne room. You could use that as like a commander's room captain's room more detention blocks so these would actually be great if you have some crew members that are captured maybe by unity forces maybe by Kieran forces and you have to board their ship in a mission and kind of break them out or free them this would be a great map for that or it could just represent a uh, it could represent another uh unity vessel or it may more likely a unity compound because i do not see any hangar bays so you kind of had his turbo lift detention center and so forth but i don't necessarily see any hangar bays so this may just simply be a colony and again it does everything doesn't have to be unity i mean this could just be you know more or less one of your more advanced uh one of your more advanced worlds now, this is one of my favorite ones, even though it's very simple. It's just a black kind of a star field with a large planet or sun at the edge of it. And I'm going to use this to play out my space space battles, space games. Uh, I've actually started testing out some of my own rules, and actually I'm kind of liking, I'm liking the way they're coming together. Uh, they're designed to be very quick. And uh, interesting, but at the same time, now this side you actually have a planet, I think, instead of a sun, right? But again, mostly a dark field. Uh, not sure how many games you you could play on uh, five parsecs from home using this, but uh, who never you never know, depending on the scenario. You know, maybe you will, you will lay your tiles down around it and say, hey, everything else is the blackness of space. If you, if you exit this board, you have to exit. There's only one way out, and that's an airlock. 
So anyway, guys, I hope that gave you some ideals as far as using terrain in the game. Uh, you know, obviously the first part of the video is probably the most uh, most relevant part is you know how you mix up your terrain so that you can you can create a lot of different worlds, but they all still have a very uh, a very unified sci-fi thing to them. There's always something that tells you this is not as it seems. We are somewhere else in space and time. All right, guys, take care. Uh, stay tuned to the series, and God bless. <laughs>